Hi everyone. Now I'm a bit excited to do this because this is my elemental that we're going into now. And that's the Spirits of Fire and Salamanders. I've, I think I've said this in previous videos. I, I was born under the, the elemental of fire and the salamander. But I feel more connected to different elements like um, sylphs. But anyway, this, this load of videos is going to concentrate on the salamanders. And fire. Fire, it has the ability to heat and to nurture life, and it has the power to disfigure and kill. It is the trickster of the elements, and like all tricksters, it must be treated with utmost respect, and its power invoked with caution. Fire spells should always be approached with a large dose of common sense. Now, common sense should come into all your spell work, but mainly with these. When working fire rituals, short sleeves are advisable. Now that's that's part of the common sense thing because you're working with fire. You don't want to be there working with fire and then set yourself on fire. Because you see some of these robes do have long sleeves and extra little dangly bits on them. Now that's why I don't really have a ritual robe that I wear. I just wear what I feel comfortable in at the time. Because I don't find it very important to worry about what you're wearing when you're doing the rituals. I find it important to concentrate on the energy you're going to use. Um, this is not a time for sweeping Lord of the Rings style gowns, like I've just said, or flowing ritual robes. It, this is what I said, they're not necessary. Like with me, I've got long hair, so when you're working with fire, you don't want to be leaning over a candle and your hair catching light. So it should always be tied back in order to avoid any impromptu witch burnings. And always have a fire extinguisher or a large bucket of water handy just in case. So this is just this is just basic common sense when working with fire. The spirits of fire are known as the salamanders. No fire flame or form of heat exists without their presence, and so they are intri intrinsic part of our everyday lives. They are present in all forms of electricity, so every time you use the straightening irons or curling tongs or your hair dryer, or lie on a sunbed, or are utilising, you are basically using the salamander's power. Without the energy of the elementals, you shouldn't, you couldn't boil a kettle, heat the house, watch TV or surf the internet, so basically without them, I could not be uploading this to YouTube. The salamanders are also present in more obvious ways, such as the flame of a ritual candle, the heat of the sun, a bolt of lightning, and of course the bonfires and fireworks displays that take place all over England on the 5th of November. If you're from America, it's um, basically about Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder pot to blow up the Houses of Parliament, so check that out if you don't know what the 5th of November means to the people in the UK. So basically, um, but basically that's a little bit on the salamanders, I'm going to read a bit more. In magical terms, salamanders are cousins of dragons. Though they are somewhat smaller, they are generally visualised as tiny dragons of flame-like hues, reds, golds and deep oranges. Electrical salamanders are seen as white, blue and violet. Lots of magical people already feel a deep affinity with the salamanders because most spells and rituals make use of their powers in the form of candles. In their more negative aspect, salamanders are responsible for lightning storms, explosions, accidental fire and volcano eruptions. Their main roles in magic are prevent protection and pure, um, purging unwanted influences from our lives. Spirits of fire are also associated with romantic relationships. In this sense, it's a good idea to visualise them as flaming fire nymphs. But this is this can be this is just a this can be any choice to you of how you visualise them. Whilst they use undines of water who preside over the area of love and enchantment, the spirits of fire are associated with the heat of lust and passion, and that first initial spark you feel when you are attracted to someone. Both elemental groups can assist you in developing a, a positive body image and learning. The Art of Seduction, which I'll probably do a few videos on a bit of seduction, but that's all I'm going to talk about the salamanders. 
I will go on to a few more things about the elemental fires before I start doing any um, magic. I'll do an invoking ritual for you so you can invoke the spirit, the, the salamanders. Um, my best way to describe a salamander, if any of you are thinking, how can I describe or visualize a salamander? Now, the best way I can say describe a salamander is the way I use do it in visualizations. I visualize a lizard, a lizard form, and that is me visualizing the salamander. So. You could do it all different, you could do mini dragons, little things like that, but that is how I visualise the salamander and that's how I bring them into my lives. Um, I visualise wizards, basically. So um, I hope you've enjoyed my first look into the salamanders. I hope you stay tuned for more videos that I will be doing on them and bless it be.